On days like today where the averages get clubbed pretty much across the board, you can get some incredible opportunities. Take Marathon Oil, the big independent oil and gas exploration production company. Assets all over the world, everywhere, Libya, Iraqi, Kurdistan, Angola, Ethiopia, Gabon, Kenya, Norway, the UK, and of course, some incredibly important domestic plays here. United States, Eagleford, Bach, and Woodford Shales. You know we talk about these all the time. Now, today Marathon had an analyst meeting where they told us some very positive things. And if this meeting happened, frankly, on any other day, I think the stock would have vaulted higher rather than barely budging. First of all, management said that next year they're increasing the rig count in the Bach and in Eagleford by 20%. They're doubling the rig count in Oklahoma's Woodford Shale. I'm starting to hear good things about that area. Second, Marathon told us that it plans to sell off its cash cow, North Sea Assets, the ones off the coast of the UK and Norway, in order to raise cash and simplify their holdings. And third, the company and announced a massive increase in its buyback, raising the repurchase authorization from $1 billion to $2.5 billion. Guys, that's 10% of the company. That's a meaningful buyback that's going to help the stock. Yet Marathon Oil did nothing today. I think Marathon's undervalued versus its peers, up 16% for the year, solid 2% yield, and the stock's selling for just 11.8 times next year's earnings, but it's got 10% growth rate. Don't take it from me. Let's check in with Lee Tillman, the president and CEO of Marathon Oil, learn more about how this company's doing and where it's headed. Mr. Tillman, welcome to Mayo Body. Have Thank you, Jim. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you. Well, you're obviously bullish on America more than almost any other oil person I've been dealing with. You're shifting your assets dramatically toward here. Well, I would say we're bullish toward profitability. Okay. And the reason being in moving to the U.S. gives us the opportunity to take advantage of these three very high-quality resource plays that we're in. You enumerated them, the Eagleford, the Bakken, and the Woodford, and we're excited about that. I mean, we're excited about communicating that in our analyst day today. Now, we see you have a, a, a great slide in all online, relentless pursuit of operational efficiency, that North American exploration production cash costs have dropped rather dramatically over the years at your place, not everywhere. Absolutely. Uh, technology, how are you doing it? Uh, I think it's just hard work, and it's really working both the numerator and the denominator. You have to work your, your expense management, but you also have to keep your barrels online. When you make those capital investments, our, our most economical barrels, as you know, Jim, are getting those ones that we've already invested in and keeping the facilities up and running. And that's why we see those great results. Now, I think that it may be difficult for people to understand you're a bifurcated company. You've got these international mm -hmm. assets. But you are selling off somewhat, what I would always think, pretty profitable assets Absolutely. in order to explore and produce. Could this, the assets you're selling off be actually worth far more than, well, let's say, uh, they say half of the company's valuation of $24 billion? Well, I won't speculate on, on valuation. Well, but, but, yeah, absolutely. But, but what I will say is you're right. These are extremely high-quality assets in the North Sea. But as we look at what uh, a potential marketing of those assets can do to our company, it's pretty remarkable. You already hit upon a few of those. Simplifies our, and concentrates our portfolio more to the high cash margin business here in the U.S. Uh, it allows us to really reset our compound annual growth rate from what we communicate today about five to seven percent, 12 to 17, to now eight to 10 percent from 12 to 17 with a successful marketing effort. Okay, we've got a bit of a dichotomy going on in our show. We have Mark Papa, who's the terrific mm -hmm. guy, the man who runs, is stepping down, but EOG. Absolutely. And we have uh, Scott Sheffield from uh, Pioneer. Man, Pioneer's got some weather problems right now, a quarter not as strong as we'd like, but that's uh, understandable. One, uh, Mr. Sheffield really believes that we're at the beginning, okay, mm -hmm. and that the price is going to go higher, and, and there's just much more oil. And Mr. Papa's much more sub subdued now. He's saying maybe we peaked in production, and, and you know, maybe pricing is not so good. Where do you fall on that spectrum? Yeah, well, maybe start with the resource side first. Okay. Uh, from a resource perspective, since 2011, we have doubled our what we call 2P resource in the resource plays. Uh, and as we talked about in our press release, now we're looking at 2.4 billion oil equivalent barrels in just the three resource plays. And we still believe there's running room left there. We're now looking at opportunities in the Eagle, Eagleford and Bakken to co-develop not just the main horizons, but also some of these secondary horizons like the Three Forks in the Bakken and the Austin Chalk down in the Eagleford. So a lot of running room left on the resource side okay. for sure. Now, uh, Marathon Refining, the refining vision, MPC, Absolutely. is actually now bigger in market cap I was hoping you were going to bring that up. I know. I, I just, do you ever think that maybe given the, the goal of how much you can sell that at Brent prices when it's West Texas, that that business would have that level of profitability? Well, I think, you know, again, I'll, I'll ask you to talk to, to Mr. Heminger on that. But, Tell him to come on. But I love he him. is, uh, you know, clearly that's also a very well-run business. I think, you know, going back to 2011, 
when we made the split. Right. It made absolute sense for the EMP business and for the downstream business. I think we're reaping the benefits of that since 2011. You know, we've been on a, a growth track. We've been able to focus explicitly on the EMP business. Now, uh, your background is very interesting because you actually got started laying pipe. Mm -hmm. We've been saying that the greatest job creator in this country can be energy, laying pipe, all the way to exploring. Where are we in that? And is this the greatest driver of jobs in the economy in the United States right now? There is no doubt that, you know, as we look at the energy space, uh, it is the bright spot in the U.S. economy. It's a driving force. Uh, when we look at, at our operations in the U.S., it's a great creator of, of, of jobs and, and economic prosperity in those areas. And, and that's going to continue. I mean, this is just a... You know, for the first time, we can talk about energy being an asset for our country. Right. And how we now leverage that is going to be the next question. Uh, energy independence on the continent in 2020? Well, I, you know, I, I don't like energy independence. I like to talk about energy security because I think the consumer yeah. always benefits from being in the world open market, right? That's always going to drive the best price, the best availability. Uh, but I do think, you know, we're moving to a time when we do have energy security and it really has fundamentally impacted the geopolitics, uh, geopolitics of the world. Well, I like the way you're moving. I think you're in all the right place and you're just continue to be able to increase that production, which is what we want. Thank you so much. That's Thank Lee you. Tillman, President and CEO of Marathon Oil. Again, because the market was so bad today, I think this one got over overlooked, but I got to tell you, it is very cheap versus his peers. Stay with Kramer.